Hello, fifth graders. Today, we're going to be doing Unit 6, More Decimal and Fraction Operations. We're going to start with Lesson 1, Place Value Patterns. We're going to observe place value patterns. What do you notice? What do you wonder? Well, the first thing I notice is that each one of these numbers has the digit 8. Each one has 8, and it has the digit 2. But I also notice that they're not all the same value. Those digits are in this different places, which make them different values, right? I wonder if it's a pattern, because those 8 and 2s move one digit to the left, right? So the, the 8 and the 2 moves from here to here, or here, you can see it better, one digit to the left, to the right, to the right, not to the left, Miss Lemoyne. Going up, it moves to the left. All right, let's see what else. I wonder what you notice and what you wonder. How does the value 8,200 compare to the value of 820? Well, if I multiply 820 times 10, I get 8,200. So it is 10 times, this number is 10 times Let's write that. 8,200 is 10 times, sorry about that, greater than 820. 10 times greater. Okay. How does the value of 82 hundredths compare to 82 thousandths. Well, I'm going to say it's the same, right? Because if I multiply this times 10, I would get that. So I'm going to say the same thing. So 82 hundredths is 10 times the value or greater than the value of 82 thousandths. Sorry, let me write that again. 82 thousandths. So this one is 10 times bigger than this one, and this one is 10 times bigger than that one. So we're looking at these patterns and noticing those patterns. All right, how many times the value of 6 is 60, and how do you know? Again, we're looking at place value, right? In this one, I could write a zero in front, that six moved to the right. So if I multiplied six times 10, I would get 60. So 60 is, is 10 times greater than six. There we go. Okay. Yeah, and they wrote the same thing, right? 60 is 10 times 6. What division equation shows that 60 is 10 times the value of 6? Well, I could do that pretty easily. I could take 60 and divide it by 6 and get 10. We're going to write equations like these relating to different numbers. Oh, here we go. Use the numbers and symbols to write as many different true equations as you can. You may use each number and symbol more than once. And you're going to create a visual display with your group that shows your equations. You can in include details such as notes, diagrams, or drawings to help others understand your thinking. So you're going to be the teacher, right? You're going to write as many equations as you can, and then you're going to help describe what's going on with those equations. So we could write equations such as, I'm going to go ahead and go to a blank page so we can see our writing. We could write 6 times 100 is 600. And if you wanted to, you could depict that in some sort of diagram or picture if you'd like. We could also do uh, some easy ones like 6 times 10 is 60. Or 60 divided by 10 is 6. 
But what if I took something like 6 and divided it by 1 tenth? They had some decimals in there. What number would that be? So we're asking how many 1 tenths are in 6, right? That would be 6 tenths. And I know that because if I did, um, if I drew it out, I could show that. And I could also write it in words, couldn't I? Right? I could do 6 divided by, I'm sorry, 6 tenths divided by 10 is 6 hundredths. And I know that's true because when I divide tenths into 10 equal pieces, I get hundredths. So if I divide 6 tenths into 10 equal pieces, that's 6 hundredths. And I could write all that out. All right, let's see what they ask us to talk about next. You're going to share that with your class. Yeah, so here's, here's one that someone wrote. 6 tenths divided by 10 is 6 hundredths, which is the one that I just wrote. And I could write on my poster or my um, visual display. Let's write it. When I divide 10 into um, 10 equal pieces, I get hundredths. And we displayed that a lot in the last unit, right? When we had our one, right? And it was all broken up into the grid, right? We knew that that smallest piece right there, that one block, was a hundredth. So if I divided tenths into ten equal pieces, I get hundredths. So if I divide six tenths into ten equal pieces, I get six hundredths. All right. Can you express the relationship between six tenths and six hundredths using multiplication? Yeah, I could do that. I could say, um, let's see, ten. Oops, I need a pen though. Oh, there we go. Well, they that's a different equation. Let's do this one. So I could say six hundredths times ten is going to be six tenths. So when I multiply something times a 10, notice that that digit moves to the left. It gets bigger. So it has to be bigger, right? So this is bigger. So it moves to the left. When I multiply anything times 10, that digit is going to move to the left. So let's, let's look at, um, well, we'll keep going. All right, 600 times 1 tenth is 6. 600 times 1, sorry, 1 hundredth. That's a 1 hundredth, Ms. Lemoyne is 6. Let's see what they ask about that. How do we know this equation is true? Well, I know that 100 hundredths, keep forgetting to get my pen, I know that 100 hundredths, THS, is 1. And we knew that from this little thing up here, right? 100 of these is going to equal that one box, okay? So, so 600 hundredths is 6. All right. Can you express the relationship between 600 and 6 using division? Sure. I could do, get my pencil, 600 divided by 100, and that would give me 6, wouldn't it? Okay. What patterns have you noticed? Well, I'm noticing that when I divide by 100, I'm going to move that decimal place to the right, 
but when I multiply times a power of 10 or 100, I move the decimal place to the left. I move the digit to the left when I'm multiplying. So we're going to continue to work with the numbers from, the, from this activity. So let's get rid of this. There we are. There's the same numbers that we were working with um, in this activity. All right. So the first thing it says is to explain or show the value of 6, how the value of 6 changes in the different numbers. Well, the value of 6 in each number is one-tenth of the number above it. One-tenth of the number above it. So this is one-tenth of that, right? This is one-tenth of that. So this 60 is one-tenth of that. So that means if I multiply this times 10, I get the number above it. If I multiply this times 10, I get the number above it. If I multiply this times 10, I get the number above it. And notice how when I multiply times 10, that digit moves to the right. So we started off with 6 tenths, now I have 6. We started off with 60, I'm sorry, 6, and now I have 60. Multiply this times 10 and I get 600. Multiply this times 10 and I get 6,000, right? So it, the second question asks, which number would come before 600? Well, I know that because if I multiplied it times 10, I would get 6,000. Oops. Let's undo that. I didn't mean to do that. But I could keep going the pattern, right? Times 10 gives me 60,000. And then that pattern would continue. So this 6 moved over to the left one digit and made it bigger or one place value, I should say. So the value of the 6 is 10 times greater in each number than it is in the number below it. All right. We already talked about what number. We also talked about this. We talked about this. Which numbers would come after 600 if the list continued? Well, it's kind of like moving that decimal place one more digit over, right? So moving the digit one more place over. So I think the next one would be six thousandths. And we haven't talked about the next number that comes up, but we could write it, even though we may not know how to say it, we're just moving that six over to the right this time, making it smaller. So this is six thousandths. This one would we would say six ten thousandths. But we have not learned that terminology. But that's okay. That's okay. All right, let's move on. What happens to the value of the 6 when it shifts to the left? When, the sh when it shifts to the left, it's multiplied by 10. It's multiplied by 10, or it's 10 times, right? So let's put that. Multiplied, and I'm going to abbreviate, by 10. It is multiplied by 10. What happens to the value of the 6 when it shifts to the right? That's what we're kind of talking about, right? It's multiplied either by 1 tenth, so it's times, times 1 tenth, or we could write it as times this. Or we could say that it's divided by 10 this time. It's divided by 10 when it's moving to the right. It's getting smaller. Which numbers would come before 600 if the list continued? Well, we already talked about that, right? So 6,000, 60,000, if we continued on up the list, it would we would keep adding those and moving it to the left. Do you think you can keep listing bigger and bigger numbers with more and more zeros? Absolutely, absolutely, because I can add as many zeros as I want, right? I can go ahead and do 600,000. Then I could do 6 million. I'm just moving it to the left to make it bigger. But really, in actuality, I'm multiplying it times 10. So remember, this times 10 is this. In the next lesson, you're going to look at some really big numbers and how they relate to multiplying over and over again by 10. Okay. So that sounds like fun. Multiplying by 10 is super easy, isn't it? Moving that to the left. 
Today we looked at some place values and expressed relationships between them using division and multiplication. What multiplication equation can I write to describe the relationship between a tenth and a hundredth? A tenth and a hundredth. So let's talk about that. So if I multiplied a hundredth, oops, there we go, one hundredth times one tenth, what do you think I would get? Or instead of multiplying it times one tenth, let's multiply it times ten times 10. What do you think I would get? I would get 1 hundredth or 1 tenth, right? 1 tenth. I could also write 1 tenth times 1 tenth is a hundredth. Um, I could write, I think that's about it. Now they're asking us to do a division equation to describe these. Well, 10,000 divided by 1,000 or divided by 10 would be 1,000. I think that would be a good division equation for that one. Oh, it says a tenth and a hundredth. Why did it give me these two numbers? A tenth and a hundredth. So let's do that. So a division equation would be I could divide one tenth by 10 and that would give me a hundredth. Can multiply, divide that. Okay. Can you also, let's see what else is coming. Can you also compare the value of the two numbers using multiplication and division? Yes. So here we did division and now we can do multiplication. We could do 1000 times 10 and that would give me 10,000. So we did a division and a multiplication equation. And there are other ones we could have done. We could have done, um, let's see. No, I think that's it. Yeah. All right. In the next several lessons, we're going to start working with that more. All right. So here we are at the cool down. And we're going to fill in the blank. So if I multiplied six hundredths times ten, Remember, when I multiply it times 10, I'm just moving that place value over. So I think that would be 6 tenths. I went from hundredths and moved it to the left to make it bigger to be 6 tenths. Now they're saying, what can I multiply times 6 tenths to get 60? So if I wrote that out, let's see, I'm going to just put lines here. Here's my 6 tenths. I want that 6 to move over one place value, and then all the way over here to this place value. So I think I'm going to have to multiply that by two, something with two zeros. So I think I'm going to have to multiply that times 100, right, to get it to move to place values. And then in number three, it says six divided by 100 is what? So normally I would say, oh, we can't do 100 goes into 6. But we've learned now that we can write this as a fraction, can't we? 6 divided by 100 is the same as 6 divided by 100. And I, I really do know how to write this as a decimal, don't I? That's 6 hundredths. So I don't have to worry about any of this. I can just think through that problem because in the last unit I learned that I can write this like this, like that. All right, boys and girls, that's all of lesson one. I know there was some different concepts in there, but they're really going to help you to move forward with this unit. So I hope to see you again in lesson two, Powers of Ten. Please like and subscribe so I can continue to make these videos. Thank you.